Good evening and uh, welcome to Fekava Vet Chat. My name is Denis Novak and I'm a Fekava president. And uh, I have enormous pleasure to welcome this evening a very close friend and extremely good clinician. And uh, I cannot say how 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 um, big name the, the Paolo is in the uh, in veterinary world. Uh, on top of that, uh, uh, we did some work together in, in, in a recent uh, time, I would say, years now, and uh, I think that we should just chat about it. Hi, Paolo. How are you doing over there in Canada? I'm doing great, Denis, and it's my pleasure to join the Fekava chat. And I thought you were going to actually starting by telling people how we actually met, which I was a bit concerned about it, you know. You, well, I don't think you should tell people that we were both wearing Speedos by the Turkish <laughs> Riviera. <laughs> that would be too personal, I think, to start this conversation. But no, jokes yeah. apart, I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you, you know, on, on this part of the world, you usually we serve desert at the end. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but, uh, that's okay as well. Yeah. Well, actually, we met in in in, uh, in Turkey uh, during the conference and the uh, conference. Yeah, absolutely, the Clivet, and uh, it was uh, just a pre-holiday season, and uh, we were there, and then uh, then I saw a list of the speakers, and I saw a few Brazilians, and I was just like, well, okay, let's give them a try, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Before that, funny enough, um, there was a volleyball, uh, volleyball competition. And actually, that was how we met over there, just playing uh, Beach volleyball. volleyball. It yeah, was absolutely. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Say uh, hi. Hi to our friends from Clean Vet, Humid, yeah. and everyone there. It was uh, We had a great time. And uh, jokes are party. We, we actually spent hours just talking about it. For those who don't know, Dennis knows a lot of history. You know, I'm passionate about the Balkans and all the history too. So we spent hours just talking about history and finally the business of veterinary medicine. And, and we, we had a natural affinity and decided to keep this work together. And it's been a pleasure actually. Yeah, uh, one day, you know, when we are uh, aiming towards like uh, 90 years old, uh, <laughs> we will just say the rest was a history. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, uh, joke aside, uh, you gain your uh, primary degree in um, Sao Paulo State University in Brazil, right? If I'm right, correct. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm, I was, you did I'm your uh, master and, and the PhD in anesthesia over there as well. Right? Correct. And, you, and yeah. uh, I did some homework, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> I see and, that. And, and then you moved uh, out of the Brazil, right? So why was that? Well, for, first of all, I, I, well, I completed my DVM and then I completed a two-year residency, master's and PhD. There was a strong focus in feline pain management and, and anesthesia as well. And then I went to do actually the experimental part of my PhD in, at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon in Canada here actually. Life has always brought me to Canada somehow. And then there was an opportunity at the University of Wisconsin to work as a clinical instructor and a possibility to complete my residency training, alternative residency training program for the American College of Veterinary Anesthesia and Analgesia. And, uh, and that was a great opportunity for me. And I thought it was, you know, it was the, uh, it was the right opportunity for me to, to carry on my studies and, and become board certified. And, and, and once you, you, you start that, it's really hard to go back or get out of that wheel. <laughs> and uh, you are like a little red, you know? <laughs> and, and then I, I never looked back. And I, I, since 2012, I'm actually now working, uh, 13 actually, I'm actually working as an associate professor here at the University of Montreal, Canada, Quebec, Francophone, cold. <laughs> well, yeah, chatting ab about the Montreal, you know, I still keep my mug and, and that's my mug. Everybody knows that I'm not so fun of a blue color, but you see, that's something. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. There we go. How did you get that? Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> well, yeah. 
how uh, was in, in Belgrade, in Serbia, and, and, and some uh, anesthesia training that we did here for the region. And uh, it was just amazing practical experience as well. Um, one thing, uh, do, do, do you keep your connections with, with, uh, with the homeland, with, with Brazil, with the veterinarians over there, with the vet school, with the practitioners? A lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, I feel that um, I'm Brazilian. I'm also Canadian now, but I, I'm, I'm truly a Brazilian man, I guess. You know, I, I like to keep my roots. You know, that's where I, I come from. Uh, you know, I, I spent 30 years of my life there. So I know the culture very well. My family's mostly there. Um, you know, I, I got married. I'm married to a Brazilian as well. So Beatrice, so we, we get to go almost every year when possible. Um, and I still collaborate a lot with my alma mater, uh, the Sao Paulo State University, UNESP Botucatu. Hello to all Botucatu people watching, if there's anyone. And, um, and I had a pleasure last year to become an, um, uh, like, I, I'm not sure the name, I, I mix it up French and English that, but I think it's a joint professor at the Faculty of Medicine there in the postgraduate courses. And, and so I'm, I'm very proud of that. And yes, we keep our connections very straight in collaboration in research. Um, I, was, I was there in 2018, I think, for, or 19 for, for a course too. So absolutely. Right. I think that's really important and probably that's, uh, I, I cannot say unique, you know, but it is something like uh, a treasure that we should all be very proud in, in, in our veterinary profession that most of the people are, um, wherever they're coming from or wherever they are working now, um, somehow they share their knowledge to the roots and they don't forget the actually background. And that's, uh, that's the only way how can we improve, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm so grateful, Dennis, to my education in Brazil. Yes, I had to catch up a lot on my deficiencies, uh, pharmacology, physiology, when trying to become a board certified anesthesiologist. You know, the, the level of medicine in the US and Canada is just fantastic, spectacular. And of course, you know, I remember my first week on clinics. <laughs> they came to me and said, there is a pacemaker. And I looked at, can, can you handle that pacemaker? I was like, sure, man. <laughs> and I was like, wow, they do pacemaker in animals. <laughs> so it was this kind of shock for me. But at the same time, I had a great time. I had a great time. I, I, I'm so grateful to the United States Botucatu and uh, to the city of Botucatu, to, you know, the, the way that they, they provide education there. It's a very hands-on practical. And, and you see a different kind of medicine that helps me up to this day. If I come to lecture in Africa, in Eastern Europe, I can adapt very easily to different yeah. realities. And, yeah. and I think uh, th this is uh, a great part of my education. Yeah, I mean, uh, going back in uh, 1995, I would say, yeah, it was my first uh, trip to, to UK. And uh, I remember, at that time I was a still student and then the first clinic that I uh, visited um, it was just uh, morning routine surgeries. And uh, back in the nineties, uh, this region was uh, uh, having a rough times. Yeah. Tough, tough, uh, yeah. Let's put it this way, yeah. but uh, over there, uh, it was my first um, uh, witnessing of the inhalation anesthesia, gas anesthesia. Right, right. So um, that morning, I was just looking, what are they doing there? Just putting some, uh, you know, plastic tubes in the mouth of, 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 of every dog and cat. I mean, how does right. they work? You know, <laughs> at, at that time, we were more uh, concentrating on, on the, some uh, uh, propiopromazine at the, at the time. And then, then the ketamine with a very little uh, analgesia and, and, and some infusion, you know, but... Uh, Talking about the gas and aesthetics, even at the vet school, was like a science fiction, you know. And uh, this is what I see, uh, like, like traveling and then and getting back and, and having those impulses. How how do you want to change things? Yeah. So uh, I, I I I can totally relate um, to your work as well. 
Uh, tell me something about your lab that you are uh, chairing and, and that you are running in, in Canada. And uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the audience already saw a feline uh, grimace scale. That's something very, very unique and uh, very handful and, and uh, very, very uh, practical uh, tool that uh, you actually de developed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Uh, we, we've been working, well, basically the lab uh, we, we put together is just a part of my work as a professor. Uh, part of my commitment is dedicated to research. And since I got here, everything that we are trying to do as a team here is really to focus on techniques that can be immediately applied in the clinical setting that touch, you know, people who are down in the trenches, you know, working in practice that I can go and give you my, give my, the, present a technique in my lecture and they can go back into clinics and apply that right away. So that has been the focus and we've been working a lot with pain assessment in general uh, for many years now. We're trying to develop these techniques that are, as I mentioned before, applicable, immediately ap applied to, to the clinical setting. And lately, we've been, for the past four years, working with the feline grooms scale. We got the, the right group of individuals, collaborators. This has been a major group effort for, there are many PhD students involved, many, it has been a great machine here in, um, and the feline grimace scale, it's a kind of work that we're very proud of. It's a valid, reliable, uh, responsive, uh, sensitive uh, instrument that is easy to use. And it's only based on changes in facial expressions. And I uh, would like to take the chance and take the opportunity to invite everyone to, to know more about the instrument by visiting the felinegrimacescale.com website which is, I think we're going to nine languages pretty soon. Uh, this has been a great work because lately, one of the, the studies that were put, it's under review actually, what we found is that actually cat owners can use the instrument very reliably and very similar to, for example, veterinarians, veterinary students, and even veterinary nurses. So this is a, a very exciting point because now we have an instrument that we, we can take it home with the owners, you know, the owners can look at and maybe they can say there's something wrong here. And there's this scale that can detect uh, acute pain cats. So how about let me take a look at this and, and apply to my cat. And maybe I, that's the time that I need to call my veterinarian and put things in context. Because again, you know, there are limitations of the scale, you know, for example, a fearful, uh, an anxious cat might be displaying signs that it could be painful, but it, they're actually just anxious because they have negative emotions as well going on. But this is something very exciting and, um, and the future is bright for feline pain assessment. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, amazing work because it allows us to, as, as you said, just to share our expertise with the owners because they spend most of the time with our patients and sometimes it's really difficult in every everyday clinical work actually to get to know what's going on because of the high level of, of the stress. Most of the animals, they, they somehow block their actually uh, natural expression. And the, at, at least this is what we see um, in this region. Not so many uh, pets are actually you used to be hospitalized since they are very young, unlike in the UK or, or States, you know. If, if, right. Uh, so, so uh, once you put them in, in, in the hospital environment, they are very much afraid and, and, and frightened yeah, yeah. and impressed. And uh, we found it very useful in, in our clinic, I have to say. Yeah. Um, that's great. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing, um, I know that you are a member of uh, lots of scientific committee and uh, WSAVA has a Global Pain Council and uh, WSAVA then, uh, Dental Guidelines uh, Committee. You are a member of uh, those groups and, and as well. Um, the question that, that I have, um, how did you manage actually to write nearly 100 scientific articles? 
this time. Well, some people sleep, you know, they, they have a good time. <laughs> they go out Saturday night and they go out to restaurants. Some other people, they are doing some, yeah. something different. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's Belgrade, uh, you know, so they don't go uh, only on Saturday nights <laughs> outside. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I think for, for me, I, I don't know. For, first of all, it's it's not me alone. It's like, I, I, maybe I'm the leader here. Um, you know, I, it's but I have a, a great team of individuals. I, I you know, I have uh, in my lab right now four PhD students, um, one resident. And I have someone who works with me, who's who happens also to be my wife, who's who's a machine, Beatrice Montero. And uh, so this teamwork, we work, we work somehow quite organized. I think uh, the team knows each one's roles, and uh, and we work in collaboration. So that's why it's so productive. You know, when there's money coming in from a grant, there's another. You know. Uh, paper going through ethics approval, and then there's another one immediately going on. Yep. You know, we're spaying cats at the same time, and then there's another manuscript being written, written up, and and another one under review. So there's uh, this huge machine always ongoing. So that's kind of the secret for the publications, and of course, everyone believes on it. it I really, I'm really thankful to my team because they are all true believers that we're trying to make a difference and really improving. Uh, animal welfare and, and health, especially dedicated to cats in this case. So this is kind of the secret. And everything else, it's it's very much uh, moved by by passion and dedication. It's like you being the president of Pecava, all the hours that you're putting together, uh, it's the same number of hours that people are putting together in committees and doing beautiful, nice projects to advance our profession. And, and that's how, you know, I'm passionate about this networking, meeting with people and, and also this big accomplishments that I think that's what drives us in the end, you know, like big projects. We're, we're going to talk some about the, the new FECAV initiative yeah. on, on anesthesia yeah. and pain management. This, this is definitely something that we're both like, All right, let, let's do it. This is going to be great. So this is a, a little bit of the secret there. You must be really under constant surveillance what are you doing in, in I mean in the scientific world and <laughs> that gives you kind of a uh, uh, little bit more pressure as well right but, but, but pressure comes ev everywhere you know you are you can be a subject of criticism and people saying that this yeah this is not too good yeah this is all right you know but yeah but he didn't compare this and that oh he says this kind of stuff I don't agree you know, this is the beauty of things. This is a democracy in most of the world and people can say whatever they say. And, uh, and I like when the Formula One drivers, you know, the, the radio gets get it, so keep your head down, you know, <laughs> keep your head down. So keep doing your good work and believe in yourself and forget a little bit of what's the background noise and what's going on in parallel at the same time. Just keep focus on your work. And that, that's what I try to do here. Well, yeah, it's uh, something that, uh, well, we are both great fans of, of basketball as well. So right. it, it's like, um, you know, once you are, you achieved everything, then uh, next season is coming, then the next game, sometimes you are up, sometimes you, you have a really lousy time and then uh, lousy night, so you miss everything, you know, but that doesn't put you off and you don't go play soccer, right? So that's exactly, exactly. That keeps yeah. you humble, actually. Yeah, absolutely. That keeps you humble, you know? Anesthesiologists are a little bit like that. When yeah. you're getting all cocky and all arrogant, they're like, I know, you know, you're not even looking while you're giving propofol. You're like, this is, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And then something happens and you go like, Jesus, that was not my best day. I gotta oh. go back, I gotta learn, I gotta do better tomorrow. And that Absolutely. keeps ourselves on our toes yeah. for sure. Yeah. This is something that we keep uh, telling to sort of uh, newcomers in, in our profession. As soon as you feel that you are going to be able to fly, something will just put you down so heavily on exactly. the ground. So, so you just know, well, each case is a really special one and just, just don't take it as, as granted. That's, and, and to that's be careful with judgment, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. When you judge people, you got to be ready to be judged as well, you know, 
if you think you're always on the top, you know, life will come and slap you on your face and put, put and, you back where you belong to. <laughs> and you know what I found uh, by reading some of the publications? It's, it's kind of like at, at that time, some of them, they were really uh, movers in, in our profession. You know, looking now 10, 10 years after, yeah. Today, maybe they are not so relevant. And uh, many of them are, are changed, but that doesn't mean that they're bad. You know, at the time they serve the purpose. And uh, this is how we were far at that stage. And uh, maybe today we, we just uh, realized that some, some things were not as, uh, as we thought about it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's kind of beauty of, um, of medicine. Yeah. It's all about perspective. You know? yeah, probably, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about the beauty, I just wonder how how you oh, haven't. Care, been... Careful with you. Are <laughs> we're recording this? <laughs> right. Uh, back to the our our common uh, fekava work. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and well, actually, just just carry on. Just say what. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, well, the, well. The exciting thing is that I have to share with people how how we met and the conversation that we had to to get to the Fekava work today. I think the, the nice thing is that we spent hours in many different meetings, especially last year that we met. We would talk for hours about basketball, Netflix, series, history, movies, and, and we wouldn't talk much about work, but then we would at some point get to work. And uh, I think... Uh, over the, the last, I, I think, three years or so, we were always having these conversations on, you know, how concerning the, the quality or level of anesthesia is still is in many, many countries in terms of, uh, sometimes I see people, I cannot organize, I cannot include anesthesia and pain management in, in one of the streams because people are not interested because they just use xylazine and ketamine up to these days, you know? Yeah, they're not going to change that. Or you're going to teach something on pain assessment, but they don't have any analgesics or don't know how to treat pain. Once, okay, I can identify and recognize pain, but I don't know how to treat it. So this was a bit concerning. And the more that I travel, the more that I, I, I go give lectures, I, I saw that was a major issue in terms of the quality of anesthesia that has been provided out there. And there's still a lot of paths dying under anesthesia just because of either human error or or mistakes or things that we should be we should be doing much better by now so this was ours our conversation how to improve the standards there it looks like people are, they they go very easily to improve a, a surgical technique they buy new equipment or they learn uh, about radiology or other examples, internal medicine, because they can apply on their daily basis. But it seems that there's a bit of like anesthesia, man, I don't want to go there. This is too much. It's dangerous. And it is. Anesthesia can be overwhelming. When I was first starting, I was like, is the patient breathing? Oh, he's not breathing. You know, is, is he dying? <laughs> is something bad happening? Or So I think we, I'm, I'm extremely happy that you as the the president elect at that time of Fekava, you saw that <clears throat> that 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 useful thing about anesthesia. And then just we were talking, we were talking, and then every time that we would meet, something new would come up in our conversation. And then I think in Greece, when we met during the Eastern European Regional Veterinary Conference, I think we had finally something that okay, we're gonna do something, an initiative together. Uh, with Fekava related to anesthesia. We didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but we were serious about it. And I, I was flattered because, you know, uh, I'm here in Canada, outside Europe, uh, and you were like, you know, we got to do this together. Um, and, and well, and this, when we met in Belgrade uh, yeah. for the course there, we had a great time those three days, the Belgrade party city, <laughs> rock on. <laughs> Um, a great city to visit, actually. Yeah. And then by there, uh, I think one of my lectures is going to pop up in your, in your screen in a few seconds. 
three, two, one. <laughs> and then uh, basically I came up with this draft that I was drawing up and coming up with the anesthetic plan overview the draft. And then at the end of my lecture, everybody was coming up on stage <laughs> and taking pictures of that draft. And I was like, Dennis, this is it. This is what we need to do. And you are taking a picture that you sent me actually later. And then suddenly we're like, yes, we got to do some infographics, something that is basic, something that is ready to use that people can apply clinically. And we decided to come with a quick user's note or something like uh, instructions to use or something. And then you said, well, but we got involved at also another anesthesiologist in Europe that, you know, to make this work more broad, you know, to have some kind of nice brainstorming. And I think both of us thought for two yeah. seconds <laughs> before That's, we both yeah. said, Polly, yeah, Polly, yeah, and Jesus, Polly. And, and Polly has been a huge influence in my career. She, yeah. taught, she taught me so much, you know, during my master's, my PhD, we worked together. And you also had your background in Cambridge yeah. with Polly. And then it was great because I remember sitting in this parking lot in a shopping mall in Italy, in Bari, in Southern Italy. And I called her, I think it was two or three days before Christmas. It was our last, you know, and we like, we talked for 45 minutes about all sorts of stuff. And then the last two minutes of the conversation, and I said, Polly, we need to talk about that Fikava thing. And then we talked for two minutes and she was like, oh, I'm so busy. Let me think. Okay, I'll do it with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know. And that's, that's the cool. story behind it. Yes, that, that really, and then we, we brainstormed. We decided which six topics would be more important to tackle that would be useful. And the idea is that anesthesia and pain management, they both have a huge impact on animal welfare. You know, can you imagine going through a surgical procedure with a, a terrible anesthetic standards? You as, you know, we as humans, you know, yeah. if you're not getting fluids, if you're not getting an IV or you're getting a horrible anesthetic protocol, your pain is not well treated. So this has a huge impact and people are talking, we got to do better we, anesthesia. You can really take things to a whole different level and step up. And there are many tools out there and we that we can use appreciate so we don't want to reinvent the wheel as we say you know we wanted to come up with something that is very practical you know hands-on and and help out people okay who cannot have who cannot afford thirty thousand dollar monitors in practice but they can still do a really good job or at least improve a little bit you know with post oximetry and post palpation you can decrease that dramatically mortality in small animals. So this is this is the goal. So we have the first one out. We're we're finalizing the second infographic as we speak. And very exciting too, Dennis, as we know, is that we're gonna have this Fekava symposium. Yep. Hopefully, uh, hopefully yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> COVID, <cool>. please. <laughs> in Prague next September uh, with a, a series of lectures to present each of these topics and I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I don't want to sound uh, too much commercial but the first infographic was really uh, taken by the storm from the clinicians all over the Europe and uh, it's, it's a huge thank you to, to you and, and, and to Polly Taylor as well. You know thank my you. experience with her uh, during I Cambridge post uh, graduate studies was uh, just amazing. And I remember the day when we were moving back and I just said, look, um, I'm, I decided to go back and uh, we want to set up the uh, two anesthetics machines over there. Probably we are going to be one of the first, if, if not first at the time. And uh, just, can you just write me sort of the, the recipe? So right. if, if any animal which is supposed to survive, how how she or he can survive the, yeah. the surgery or, or, or diagnostic pr procedure and she was so helpful so so helpful and uh, this is exactly what you are saying you know first we list the equipment that we 
uh, Maiger uh, all, all over here, and then we uh, develop some protocols, uh, what sort of uh, circuits we should use, uh, which at that time Halotain was still on the market, and then uh, very soon we switched to the to to ISO and. Uh, but it, it it was so practical, and uh, some of the things we 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 still uh, are using to today because uh, mostly for the critically ill patients. And uh, yeah, you you do improve over the years, but uh, right. back to basics. And uh, this is actually what we thought um, when we were chatting about it: how how big uh, the discrepancies is still in 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 Europe from the north to the very south or, or east, you know, uh, mm -hmm. of, of the Europe. Um, qualities is different, but the circumstances are different as well. You know, the, some of the colleagues, they they simply were not exposed to the state of the art anesthetic protocols or availability of, of medicine. That's right. like global education. question. Education yeah. is a major issue. Absolutely. And then if, if you don't have it, uh, simply you don't know how to work with uh, with it once you get it yeah so uh, it, it, it's really amazing and um, I'll just go into, into you this opportunity to, to say uh, without um, uh, DECRA and then the, their general support yeah, um, yeah. not just in, in terms of uh, sponsorship but the whole logistic and uh, clinical um, advisory thing and uh, uh, efficiency, I have to say, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, both of us, we, we hate if we don't get a, re a reply on email uh, the same day. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with, 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 with some of the companies, that's always tricky because they are so busy. But uh, up to now, everything went extremely well, like extremely well. And they, uh, they've been hugely responsive, really absolutely. supportive. And this is a true collaboration. It's not only yeah. here's the paycheck and they'll put our names out there. No, they're they're part of everything that we're doing. And very exciting to be taking the show. No, not only in Prague, but we have a plan to take uh, the show on the road for a couple of places. So this is very exciting. And, and I'm, I'm also very grateful to DECRA. Uh, absolutely just amazing and i'm really looking forward uh, for the whole six uh, volumes let's put it this way yeah right right uh one thing how are you doing during this covid beep time um <laughs> i'm really enjoying no i'm not <laughs> well it's very interesting because i think a lot of people felt like i did in the beginning there was a sense of peace in the beginning like okay you got to stay home I, I was in Italy uh, during my sabbatical year we had to come back uh, a little bit earlier during my uh, before the lockdown and then we were like okay we're home now for for a while I I don't know when it, this is going to be end or this is going to be over and we we were just okay and then suddenly you were catching up with work you know, a lot of those projects, a lot of that list is, was like, great, I'm, I can take care of that right now. But then it, it, it gets a bit mental sometimes. And I'm back on clinics too. I feel that, you know, veterinary services here in Canada, they, they're up to like to, I don't know, 50%. Our emergency calls are up to like 30% or so. So I feel that, you know, veterinarians have also been working harder you know, uh, in order to take care of pets or in a broad, you know, talking about veterinary medicine in general in a much more broad way, uh, we have to also wear our, our gears and, and be in the front line to, to look after many different things. And, and that has been taking a cost in our, in our people too, in our profession too. And people sometimes don't realize that they you know, there are people yelling and screaming at veterinarians and demanding more and more. Um, so I've been seeing this burden in our profession too. Uh, it, my, my lifestyle is about, you know, a bit traveling too. So I miss that too, you know, getting out of here a little bit, um, going out there, recharging my batteries, talking to people, networking, and then you come back, you're like, this is what I like. This is, you know, this is the life that I want. And here I've been working for the first time, I think nine months straight here. <laughs> That's in a long time. So 
But uh, overall, what I can say is that this is going to be over soon, guys. You know, when, when you're, going, so. through, <laughs> yeah. I just when you're going through a bad time, today. just try to be patient, you know, um, try to go work out, try to do something unrelated to veterinary medicine. And very soon, yes. of course, we have to learn something out of this and, uh, and do better as a, as a planet, as a world as a community, uh, but you know, it's going to go away and we're going to adapt. I think probably we're going to have more and more hybrid conferences now, conferences going live and streaming worldwide. And, and, but overall, I cannot complain. I cannot complain. Jesus Christ, so many people suffering, uh, losing their jobs and dying. I, I, you know, I'm super happy. I, I have a full salary, no matter what with the university of Montreal, I, I have a great team of people, some good friends, and and trying to keep myself positive to throughout. And then there, of course, there are moments that we're down. Then I text on WhatsApp Denis Novak, and we start screaming, yelling yep. at the at the COVID situation. <laughs> well, I see, and then. Um... A few weeks ago, we had the annual um, council uh, of ECAVA, and um, it, it was really nice to see, uh, nice to see all the directors from uh, 42 countries, and uh, uh, pretty much the similar situation in, in Europe. Yeah, although I have to say, in this region, uh, sort of East, Eastern Europe, uh, Western Balkans, uh, the 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 rise in, in in demand for the veterinary services is not so huge, but uh, we are stable, but probably that relates to to economy as well. Right, right. Uh, so that's one thing, yeah. But the level of uh, stress, it's uh, just getting higher and higher, although we are kind of like um, stress freaks. So that's okay. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but anxiety, yeah. People yeah. are very anxious. Um, you just cannot predict. And, and as you said, uh, some of the reactions of, of the clients or, or demands uh, are even more unrealistic than they've been before. Let's put it this right, way. Right, yeah, and yeah. All, I mean, sure, that's not the rule and, and, and that's not on the purpose, but uh, simply situation affects uh, everybody. And um, I have to use this opportunity to uh, congratulate to... Uh, Trisha Colwell for the FECAVA fact sheets on the mental health. So those yeah, are out as yeah. well. And, and, and that helps uh, a lot uh, how to cope with uh, everyday uh, things which are coming on, on, on our way uh, during our work, yeah. Um, one more thing, yeah, we, we had the last live to live um, council meeting in, in Antwerp in Belgium. So that was in March. And, I remember uh, that. I was supposed yeah. to be there with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then you flew back to, to, to Canada. And uh, after that actually was the uh, one more course in Belgrade. And uh, the other one was uh, sort of mid-May, but that was uh, not so international. But since then, yeah, we are not just traveling. So, um, I mean, not traveling for, for this person. And I'm really kind of getting uh, tired of, 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 of this situation yeah, it's, yeah. it's just too long you know and it, it is too too long yeah particularly for the medical brains i would say you know because winter uh, is coming <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah and uh, but i mean this is how the life puts you sometimes and you just don't have a proper choice i would say exactly it's a task for all of us reinvent yourself be productive find something to do <laughs> yeah and um going back to 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 Fakava symposium in anesthesia hopefully next year in uh, in prague and in czech republic right yeah. uh, i'm really looking forward to to it because um probably most of us we, we know how excellent speaker you are uh just don't be modest, okay? Just, okay? Well, That's the fact, well, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And um, we are brainstorming at the, at the moment with the DECRA as well to, to come up with uh, something uh, rather unique uh, with uh, sort of like, like a round table, but more in, in some kind of cozy leisure style. And I interactive, hope that yeah. Interactive that we will manage that. 
and uh, hopefully it, it will see the light of the day yeah that's that's the only thing that i can say uh, right now yeah cool. totally totally yeah you no know, if if there's one thing that can should happen in 2021 is that symposium i'm looking forward to it <laughs> Absolutely. just holding tight to it you know and and that's something that i've been doing you know sometimes i catch myself planning trips oh right, well and this comes back you know i'm gonna visit you know, <laughs> even if it doesn't happen, it, it helps me getting through this. Yeah, but I mean, it, it will be just amazing to to go back to the. I mean, it's not going back. It's actually just uh, continue to have a, a freedom and availability. Like, hi, Dennis. I'm now in Ljubljana. I'm heading towards Zagreb. What are you up to? Well, I'm just sitting in my car, and then I'm just going to drive and meet you. You know. So yeah. this is how we used yeah. to do things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, thank you. You actually met me in Zagreb for a pizza. I was like, you drove from Belgrade to Zagreb, and it's like a seven-hour drive. <laughs> uh, well, I, no, I mean, um, both ways, yeah. But you know, you're... yeah, both ways, and we had <laughs> yeah, a delicious pizza, like, uh, yeah. you know. 300 and, and, and something kilometers one way, yeah. Right, but, right. Like uh, driving for pizza for for uh, to eat proper pizza for six hours. That's okay. <laughs> the pizza must be good, man. And he was. He was. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, he was. Next he was. Zagreb's cathedral. Yeah. All yeah. Right. It's a. It's a. It's a beautiful part of the world that I'm. I'm really digging people there too, uh, party people and very social too. You know, and uh, I hope That's to visit more plan. and more, <laughs> more yeah, opportunities there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are going to. Um, call it off for for now you know this official part yeah the kids and, need to go to bed yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a huge pleasure again just to see you and uh, to have a chat and um, i i'm really looking forward just to see you again you know and uh, Me to too, do thanks. the same thing Me yeah too. you absolutely. and the gang yeah and uh, absolutely yeah say hi to beatrice and um, to all of the people over there okay thanks man thank and, you so much Dennis. We'll be in touch soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.